Hello, fellow seekers. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice podcast. My name is L, and I return again today to speak on some spiritual philosophy, Law of One, and how I relate all of that to my life and my life experience. So today, I wanted to talk about duality and understanding duality. I often, when I post on the Law of One Instagram page, and we speak about um, polarization and duality, there's always some wise guy who tries to say something along the lines of, oh, well, I'm sort of better than choosing one path or the other. That's the illusion of choice. I go down the middle path. And I would suggest that that person, although that person may be trying to say the same thing as what I'm saying, I think we do need to be a bit more clear about what the situation is here and that you don't necessarily want to be neutral because neutrality equals no power and no power equals, well, no movement, no growth. So let's talk about that. I wrote down a little thing here about that and I, it's probably a reiteration of what I just said but I'm just going to read it so that we can get an idea of where we're going to be headed with this and I also want to be speaking about truth and the inversion of truth basically well <laughs> it's hard to say on the podcast I don't want to um, you know demote my podcast for talking about certain topics but Satanism would be basically the inversion of truth and so a lot of stuff in this world right now is inverted truth and you may well be thinking that you're pro compassion and pro this but you're possibly being sold an antithesis of the truth an inversion of the truth which is tricking you into you know serving the self i suppose instead of serving others in a more pure way um, but yeah, I just wrote here, people always think that they are wise to say that choosing either side of duality is folly. They misperceive. Duality is harmony versus inverted harmony. If you say you are a middle-of-the-road type of person, it means you are siding with the one-quarter evil. Why? <laughs> because being positive includes all. It includes the negative, whereas the negative is only negative. You may see it as either walking both paths or one solitary path. The positive path technically is the middle path that people claim to be about. In other words, there's sort of only two real paths back to the Creator, if you will. And there is no middle path. So if you want to think about it this way, people are like, well, I don't choose service to self or service to others. I choose both. And technically, that is correct. That is a uni unified perception. But the idea is, is that the service to others path both includes service to others and service to self. In other words, it contains harmony. It contains all. It contains the, the mathematical proportions of positive and negative. However, the negative path is sort of the path that is not, and so it has to deny the positivity and be an inversion of the truth in order to essentially go on its way. So in other words, if you're on the unified path of service to others, it does include service to others and service to self. Whereas if you're just on the service to self path, you are strictly on the service to self path and you are negating in the negative path, you are negating the positive part of the equation. So when someone tells me that, oh, you know, I'm so smart, I, I just go down the middle path. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, the middle path is the path of nothing. It's the path of uh, being swayed one way and then the other and then falling into the sinkhole of indifference and probably confusion because you're not really polarizing in one way or the other. So you get sort of mixed messages about which way to go. Ah, wouldn't you know? So, I have a few quotes to back up some of this from the Law of One material, and I just thought that I would read you some of them, and I will just, um, you know, explain what comes to mind as I read them. So, in this, there is basically what I searched in the Law of One material today to get a lot of these quotes is I searched antithesis and perversion. Um, it just sometimes, I, I looked for inversion, but there was no mention of inversion. So sometimes you have to find the specific words that Ra uses to sort of pull out more quotes where they include those words or those topics at least. So I found that Ra likes to use antithesis and perversion or perversities. Um, so to, to explain what I'm trying to explain, which I would call the harmony and the 
antithesis of harmony or you know there's the truth and then there's the antithetical of truth there is the uh the christ and there is the antichrist ah i'm gonna drop some gematria on you later actually we might as well just do it now because i already just gave it away so <laughs> um in gematria it's the idea of basically converting letters into numbers and then as you do that you can sometimes see little patterns you know, once you get a large set of examples, you can see patterns develop uh, with which words equal what kind of numbers. And so just um, a small symbolic sort of weird thing that I found uh, was that when I was, I created this sort of Gematria book for myself a few years back, it was just out of curiosity, wanting to explore, you know, if there is sort of connections there with, with the underlying energy behind words. And so as I was writing down a bunch of words in this book. Each page has a different number so that I can calculate the number of that word and then put that word on that page. So anyways, long story short, we have Jesus Christ equals 151. I'm sorry if you're not a religious person. I'm not particularly religious either, but it doesn't bother me to talk about these concepts in 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 the light of of, of truth. So Jesus Christ is, in my opinion, sort of the symbolical reference of the heart chakra you know nobody comes to the father except through me nobody comes to the indigo violet ray the violet chakra right to the creator except through the christ through the heart so anyways there, there's that part all right so in gematria jesus christ is 151 151 151 if you um, look up antichrist it is 121 so I just want you to take 151 and flip it upside down and backwards in your head, and you'll see that it equals 121. And so you sort of have this, uh, I know proof is sketchy in third density, and we shouldn't um, even be attempting to show proof, and it's not proof, but it's something. And I don't know, if you're a conscious thinker, you may um, be open to that concept. So I just thought I would mention it. Okay, so before we get too off of track, let's go into some of this talk about inversion and antithesis. So this is um, basically raw in this question answer. They ask a question and they raw answers about sort of how the, the three different paths, so the positive path, the negative path, and sort of the unpolarized path, the, the neutral path, how they would all react to a certain scenario. And the certain scenario is if um, maybe they got sick or had some kind of bodily distortion, you know, a cancer or a growth or some issue with their body. Okay, so in session 64.16, they state, the questioner asks, let us assume that a bodily distortion occurs within a particular entity who then has a choice of seeking allopathic aid or experiencing the catalyst of the distortion and not seeking correction of the distortion. Can you comment on the two possibilities for this entity and his analysis of each path? Raw answers, and actually before I do read the answer, allopathic aid is essentially, to my understanding, just like going to the regular doctor, not like a... Um, like a spiritual doctor, okay? So anyways, um, if somebody is trying to, has a body distortion, and should they seek going to the doctor, or should they seek to just um, experience that catalyst and not seeking the correction of that distortion? So Ross answers, I am raw. If the entity is polarized towards service to others, analysis properly proceeds along the lines of consideration of which path offers the most opportunity for service to others. For the negatively polarized entity, the antithesis is the case. For the unpolarized entity, the considerations are random and most likely in the direction of the distortion towards comfort. End of quote. So as you can see here, if somebody becomes sick, uh, they sort of have three options, but it depends on the polarity of you. So are you a service to others being? Are you a service to self-exclusive being? Um, the service to others being would essentially look at the self and would say, hey, what is the best path towards service to others? What, where will I serve maximally? Do I serve maximally by just staying sick? Or do I serve maximally by seeking health and then, um, you know, and longevity and being able to serve for a longer period of time? And then the negative entity would just 
think the opposite. It would think, well, what is the best way to serve myself? What is the best way that I can essentially create more separation within myself to serve myself and teach others the ways of separation as well and control and manipulate and enslave them? And then you have your third option with the unpolarized entity who uh, really isn't considering too much about service to others or service to self. And so it's mostly just random and they seek comfort. <laughs> Wouldn't you know there's a lot of people on this earth who right now that you may think are just seeking comfort? Uh, well, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe they haven't picked up the baton, as Raw likes to say, and, and begun the race yet. And hopefully they do before, you know, they realize that the, the race is almost done. Okay, so now I want to go into um, the, you know, don't become the antithesis of your intentions, of, your, of the way you intend to serve. So Ra is talking here in 24.4 session about their attitude towards helping some people on Earth in, in our history, in our Earth history. And anyways, I don't want to go into too much of that. I'll just read you the quote. So Ra says, Our attitude thus was one of caution, observation, and continuing attempts to creatively discover methods whereby contact from our entities could be of service with the least distortion, and above all, with the least possibility of becoming perversions or antithesis of our intentions in sharing information. End of quote. So you can see here, when Ra even is attempting to serve others, they are being cautious as to how they serve, right? They're trying not to become the antithesis of their intention. They're trying not to become the perversion of, of, of truth. Like they want there to come to give truth. So they need to sort of give it in an undistorted form, or at least in the, their best attempt at an undistorted form. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people on earth who are very tricky and they would like to distort the original intention, sort of have a similar message. It's almost like the way these Satanists and these negative entities pervert good intentioned um, ideas is this is just from my perspective is they imitate and mock the positivity up like like 95 percent of the way so in other words they sound really good it sounds really positive it sounds tempting and then there's like 95 percent of what they say is almost the same as the the positive idea however the five percent trickery in there is there um, which is usually some trickery of service to self, which perverts the intention of the original service to others intention. So this kind of brings up in my head the world, the media, like the current state of affairs with most people that I know who, you know, I don't know if it's just it's my ego talking, but just aren't wise enough to see the the perversion of truth and the antithesis and the inversion of truth that they're being sold on the daily. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to give specific examples. I just want you to think of them yourself. Uh, but it is pretty much everywhere. There is this thing going on where they sell you the good intention. Like I said, it sounds very similar to the positive idea. So, you know, on the media and the news, they'll sell you an idea as if it is just good for everyone. And, you know, you would be stupid not to, to go along with this idea because it's like, if you're a good person, of course you would be for this. Like, who wouldn't be for that? You're, you you got to be a terrible person if you're not for this, <laughs> right? But maybe you're wise enough to look at that idea that they're trying to sell you and you can see that it's like almost good, but there's this 5% in there that is just really perverts the intention of the whole thing. And you say, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, they're so close, but I can't go along with this because it just doesn't align with my intentions of like respecting the free will of others and attempting to serve others. Um, so you then are vilified as a, <laughs> a negative person or something that you're not, uh, which is really ironic because maybe you're the one with the more pure intentions and the more like compassion and wisdom to see through the idea that's trying to be sold to you. Now, if you are one of the ones who are sort of being tricked, it's, it's, it's really difficult to unlearn what it is that's being done to you because usually you're like, hey, you know, my intentions were good. So if my intentions are good, you know, even if I'm being tricked, um, is it really my fault? And I mean, to what degree it's your fault 
no, like intentions are really the underlying thing that matters of, of, of any service that you do. But I can just state that there's, I see a lot of people in life right now running around who think they have good intentions to serve others, but they're operating in a way that steps on the free will of others. And when you step on the free will of others, I mean, that's the first distortion of the universe, to my understanding. The Law of One says, you know, the first distortion is free will, meaning, like, it's very important. You have to, if you love somebody, give them the free will to seek at their own pace. You don't coerce them and manipulate them into being a good person. You instead let them freely get there. And if they would like to, you know, ask you questions about that type of thing, you know, you feel free to to give them the best you got. But you don't coerce and manipulate people into being good people. It just doesn't work that way. But that, to me, is what's being sold in the media and really everywhere lately. It's just that, like, hey, you're either with us or you're against us. And if you're against us, then you're evil. And ironically, you know, most of the bad things in the world are coming from good-intentioned people, um, who, as they say, are, you know, you might have to look this term up so you don't get too upset about it, but they're useful idiots is, is a term that's, that's used, which means that um, there's somebody maybe at the top of the pyramid who does have negative intentions and is very aware of what they're doing in manipulating people below who are the, you know, definition useful idiots, which means that they... Um, although have good intentions, their good intentions are being hijacked and used against themselves and against others to serve this this higher negative entity, um, or essentially to at least spread the 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 negative polarization, you know, further across this planet, which is sort of um, what the negative entity wants to do in serving itself is to you know be that that control structure that teaches everyone else about the the love of negativity <laughs> but we choose otherwise so um i have a couple more quotes here before we wind up so i have um you know perversities i mentioned right so antithesis perversities we have harmony we have anti-harmony it is good to look up the definition of perversities um, because in this one quote they they explain how on the negative path, um, the negative path enjoys the examination of the perversities of nature. And so if we look up the term perversities, I mean, you know, it's kind of obvious, but um, it, dictionary says a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way, contrariness. Um, the other definition would be the quality of being contrary to accepted standards or practice, unreasonableness. Right, so a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. In other words, um, you know, negative entities and negative media who have control of, of these types of things in our world, uh, they're very much very good at delivering to you a message which is a perversity of the truth. It is highlighting the seeming chaos and negativity of the world in a way which makes you want to be negative with them. So, I don't know. Okay, so here we go. I'll read you this quote here. Session 1917, it says, Some love the light, some love the darkness. It is a matter of the unique and infinitely various creator choosing and playing among its experiences as a child upon a picnic. Some enjoy the picnic and find the sun beautiful, the food delicious, the games refreshing, and glow with the joy of creation. Some find the night delicious, their picnic being pain, difficulty, suffering of others, and the examination of the perversities of nature. These enjoy a different picnic. While these experiences are available, it is the free will of each entity which chooses the form of play, the form of pleasure. End of quote. So you see here, there is only sort of two choices. There is the joy, harmony, love, light, path, and then there is the night and, you know, pain, difficulty, suffering of others, examinations of the perversities of nature. Because I think when you examine the perversities of nature, it allows the negative entity to sort of justify the way that it acts and the way that it thinks, right? Like if you've ever 
had somebody who's really into highlighting the negatives of conspiracy theories, that's what I think of the examination of the perversities of nature. Like, yeah, there is a lot of negativity in the world. And, you know, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, you can, but it's very <laughs> dark. It's very, very dark. And I think that the negative entities go down those holes to justify sort of like, well, why would a creator, you know, allow these types of things? Um, or, you know, just to justify, well, I can act this way because, look, it's part of nature and, and nature acts this way, so why can't I? And I mean, they're sort of right, but they can only go down the path that is not for so long until they eventually come up against the truth, which is like a brick wall, and they see that if they would like to progress further upon their path, they must switch their polarity from negative to positive upon a sort of satori, a realization, which, you know, as an immediate switch is the way I understand it. But anyways, um, I want to give you the last quote that I have here about how everything that these negative sort of entities do, and... Um, and, you know, I, I, I say negative entities, it just sounds so out there, right? You have to think of yourself when, when I'm talking about this. We all do these things within ourselves. So the more we are aware of them, and the more that we can see and know that these possibilities exist, then the more that we can sort of not fall trick to them, and we can hopefully, you know, find the truth within ourselves, which isn't always so immediately clear. Um, but here's another quote on how they pervert um, the truth and pervert harmony and like that satanists and negative entities and, and all these sorts of things all they can do is mock creation they you know there it's the path that is not the truth is that harmony is the truth unity oneness we are all one they have to go down the path of separation the path that is not for them to separate themselves from the truth. And they can do that because it's a path of knowing themselves, but eventually you have to come a lot, you know, back to the truth because that is the end of the maze. Like you have a map and the destination is known and you have uh, many roads and ways to get to the destination and that is your free will of getting there and knowing yourself along the way. But everyone will end up in the same destination of unity of oneness. And so all that the negative entities can do is essentially invert the truth. Remember how I said Christ is 151 and Antichrist is 121? Well, why can't the Antichrist maybe have like its own, you know, specific name? And then, you know, they sort of do. But but the it's because all they can do is mock the inversion of of the actual harmony of truth. So if you just recognize like a cross, right? They'll invert the cross, turn it upside down and backwards and they, oh, look at us, we have inverted power. We have, <laughs> good for you. Okay, so anyways, it says here 55.6, what method of communication with the Orion entity would a negative bidder of this type use? Orion entity meaning like a negative entity of a higher density who is inter interacting with a a negative bidder on the earth planet. So essentially, it's like the negative person's calling up to the negative entity to assist it in serving the self and learning the ways of self-service. So, Ra answers, I am Ra. The two most usual types of bidding are, one, the use of perversions of sexual magic, two, the use of perversions of ritual magic. In each case, the key to success is the purity of the will of the bidder. The concentration upon the victory over the servant must be nearly perfect. End of quote. So I just want to highlight that part in that they talk about the perversions of magic and the perversions of ritual magic. So like I was saying, in rituals, in negative rituals, if you've ever kind of gone down that rabbit hole, they, they really are just inversions of the, the actual ritual. So, so say for like centuries, um, you know, some pagans or Christians or whatever the heck they are, Egyptians, who knows, they have some positive ritual where, you know, they, they sit and they walk in a circle this way and they do that and this and this and this. Well, the, the Satanists and the negatives and the antithesis people would essentially just look at those, those rituals and they would do the opposites of them. They would do, all right, instead of a circle, we'll go in a reverse circle. And, you know, instead of the pentagram, we have the inverted pentagram. And instead of the cross, we will have the inverted cross. But that's the thing, is that if you recognize their anti-truth always comes from the truth, and that that is something powerful. And, and although I know that 
The creator neither blinks at the dark or the light. I know that truth is generally more powerful than anti-truth. And I, <laughs> I know Ross says, you know, that the, the two are equal, but in the end, harmony wins. And so, like, if you stand in the truth of harmony, in, in the truth of, of the, the open heart of that, that Christ consciousness within your heart, then the Antichrist can't necessarily do anything to you. Like, right, if you're a neutral party, then when power comes upon you in the negative sense, it's probably really easy to sway you. Whereas if you are a positive party, then a negative power comes to sway you. And it's just a positive versus a negative, which equals a general neutrality. And that negative thing will will vacate, is, is my understanding. So, you know, I, I guess even I watched, um, sorry, I'm like 10 years behind. Uh, somebody just told me to watch the show Lost. And I started um, watching that show like a few months back. I basically binged it and we're I'm already done it so there's I just I'll explain briefly like I, that's just what came to my mind when I'm explaining this to you is on the island there is this sort of dark force this negative thing which can come and attack people and the one guy that it doesn't attack is sort of the the one guy who is a believer in Christ and, and a believer in love and unconditional love and he's got his cross on and he sort of stands in his truth and 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 I think, you know, probably the way I thought that's thinking through his head is that, um, you know, what, I am light and I, I know this truth and this protection and this power and I'm standing in truth. And, you know, if fear comes to get me and kills me, then so be it. I'm a creature of God. I am infinite. It is as it is all is well. And this black cloud of smoke, which normally went and would just attack and kill anybody else, um, came up to him, stopped right at his face, and just sort of stood there, and they stand face to face, and then the smoke vacates, and he continues on. So I know <laughs> maybe that was a pretty obscure example, but um, that's the honestly the way I, I think of these things, is that if you're polarized towards the positive, you know your truth, and you stand in truth, the negativity can challenge you, and it, it very much will. But... Um, you are powerful, my friend. You stand in harmony and in truth. Um, you know, the harmony and the resonance of that harmony will back you up. It's almost the way I think of it is, is also resonance. The universe operates on truth. And so when you resonate with the truth, you have the whole power of the universe behind you. You have all positive entities who are, are resonating with that truth increasing your power and holding it up if, if you will or energizing it if whatever you want to think but you're resonating with the truth you are resonating with all that is with the unity of oneness and you stand in that truth and you stand in that oneness and and no harm can come to you you know the end of your physical body can come uh, but you are a infinite being of infinite worth and you will continue on in one form or another and that's what you know and that's what you stand in and you stand in love and compassion and truth and and let the world wag on. So, my friends, if you enjoyed this podcast, and I hope that I was able to share some of some things that were helpful to you along your path, and I hope that when you watch the media, you, uh, you know, consider what you're being told and what you're thinking. And basically, you know, when I watch the media, I like to think, what is it that they want me to think, right? If you kind of do that, the, the messages become a little more obvious. They become a little bit more transparent. You can see through the message. Like, like what will this end up with me thinking? Why do they want me to see this? Okay? So anyways, um, you know, reevaluate, step back. You know yourself. You know that you are a service to others entity. You seek to serve. You seek to share love. Beyond that, respect people's free will. What, what more can we do? Um, you know, try to be a good person. So there's my advice here for you. Um, if, if you appreciated the podcast, I appreciate you. You can subscribe to the podcast, please. You can leave a like, comment. That helps with all the algorithms and helping people see the page and, and be able to get this knowledge to themselves if they so seek it. Um, you can find links to this information at theoneinfinitecreator.com. That's my website that I created to has links to the LL Research material who provide us all of this for free. Thank you to them. And uh, yeah, if you find value in what I do, you know, I really appreciate it if you jumped on my Patreon. I do seek to do this in 
long form. I've been doing it now for a year, uh, almost, I think it's actually probably almost a year anniversary, probably right around this time. So one year of podcasting, my friends, I seek to serve. If you seek to help me on this path, I'm not going to be doing any advertisements or any shilling of that nature. So, you know, I like to freely give this to whoever seeks it. And if you have the abundance to help uh, freely give to myself so that I can keep doing this in a steady fashion, uh, do know that it goes it goes a long ways. And I am extremely grateful. And I have uh, just so much gratitude for the, the few people that really do support this effort because I think that without you, my humanness might eventually catch up to me and I, I you know, I might fall and, and, and fall behind and get a little discouraged. But, you know, having multiple people behind you, um, holding you up, having your back, encouraging you to keep going. It really just means the world to me. So thank you guys. I love you. Take care. I hope you have a good rest of the week. Oh, and briefly, I wanted to share my friend Jeff, who I was asking for funds for. I did get a, I think two or three people who who um, donated to the cause and to, you know, his therapies and stuff like that. And I just wanted to let you know, well, who did donate and to who didn't and just sent their love. Um, you know, he was extremely grateful for the message. He mentioned that he was crying. Um, he has become a bit of a, a blubbery man, he says, and throughout this process of, of, of healing and seeking and, um, you know, accepting healing gifts from others. So it was less about the amount of money and more about the gesture of assisting him and just knowing that, you know, somebody is there to help him. Um, I just wanted to let you know that he was very grateful and lifted up by the whole thing. So I don't share that to get spiritual points over here, spiritual brownie points. I do it uh, just to let you guys know because I was asking you for something. So I wanted to share with you the outcome. So thank you everybody who helped out. Um, we'll probably just leave it like this for now and I'll see if we can maybe try to help him again sometime in the future if he needs it. But yeah, I just wanted to say that your service does not go unnoticed and is is doing something. So thank you.